Philippine history is no stranger to tragedies. Many would recount the tragic demises of historical figures like Andres Bonifacio, Jose Rizal, and Diego Silang. But behind every great history is a tragic love story. With a colorful history like that of the Philippines, stories of tragic romances have continued to intrigue Filipinos to this day. And if you're tired of watching those typical teleseries in TV, you know, Stop it. Get some help. With the usual stories about mistresses and love triangles, then these love stories from Philippine history will surely get your tears running. So today we will be looking at some tragic love stories in Philippine history. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the Kabilin Center channel. It will help us create more content for you. Now ready your tissues because this one is a tearjerker. When it comes to tragic Filipino love stories, the story of Jose Rizal and Leonor Rivera tops the list. And if you're a fan of the GMA teleserie Maria Clara at Ibarra, then this love story is for you. Despite the national hero's reputation as an adventurous romantic, Dr. Jose Rizal's greatest love was his cousin and childhood sweetheart, Leonor Rivera. A native of Tarlac, Rivera captivated the young Rizal when the latter was a medical student in the Universidad de Santo Tomas. The two met during Rivera's 13th birthday party. What started out as casual encounters later bloomed into a full-fledged romance. For 10 years, they corresponded through love letters, even when Rizal left for Europe. While in Europe, Rizal became an active patriot who contributed to the propaganda movement. He later wrote his first novel, No Limitangere. Maria Clara, the love interest of the protagonist in the novel, was inspired by Leonor Rivera. It is also no coincidence that Rizal based on the novel's protagonist, Crisostomo Ibarra, on himself. Unfortunately, the Noli earned Rizal powerful enemies back in the Philippines, and anyone close to him was heavily scrutinized. Because of this, Leonor's mother took drastic measures to protect Leonor from being associated with Rizal, who was already labeled as a filibuster. She bribed the local postal clerk so Rizal's letters wouldn't reach Leonor. When the letters stopped coming, both Rizal and Leonor grew apart. Eventually, Leonor was persuaded by her mother to marry Henry Kipping, a railroad engineer from England. Upon hearing the news, Rizal was said to have wept like a child. Rivera died in 1893 after giving birth to her second child with Kipping. Three years later, Rizal was executed in Bagumbayan. It was said that one of her final requests was to have a silver box containing the ashes of Rizal's burned letters buried with her. Now this one is for the books. As a well-known painter, Juan Luna earned the admiration of many women. Among them was Paz Pardo de Tavera. Paz and Juan crossed paths when the latter became a frequent visitor to the home of the Taveras, who opened their homes to Filipino illustrados or intellectuals in Europe. The two fell in love and eventually married on the 8th of December, 1886. Luna and Paz lived at Villa de Pont in Paris. The couple then had two children, Maria de la Paz and Andres. When their daughter Maria died at a young age, the two started to become cold and distant towards one another. Things took a dark turn on 1892. On that year, Paz met a certain 55-year-old man named Monsieur de Sac and often spoke fondly of him. The ill-tempered Luna quickly became jealous and would spy on Paz. It was said that Luna would often beat Paz a couple of times for having an affair with Dusak. Paz's mother, Doña Juliana Goricho, and her brothers would later come to her rescue. But it was too late. On the 23rd of September, 1892, Luna shot both Paz and his mother-in-law, Doña Juliana, 
at point blank range. The latter was killed on the spot while Paz was brought to the hospital. Paz died 11 days later. Felix Pardo de Devera, who later tried to intervene, also sustained minor chest wounds. Juan Luna was later arrested but was acquitted by the French court because it was considered a crime of passion. Luna later died on the 7th of December, 1899 in Hong Kong. The couple's surviving child, Andres Luna de San Pedro, later became a renowned architect in Manila. Who says love is all sunshine and roses? Well, this love story, in the backdrop of a revolution, will inspire you. Before becoming the bolo and pistol-wielding revolutionary we come to know today, Andres Bonifacio was an ordinary man making his own way in the world. That is, until he met Gregoria de Jesus. Orian, as she was fondly called, was 18 years old when the 29-year-old Andres fell in love and wanted to marry her. By that time, Bonifacio was already a widower as his first wife died from leprosy. Orian was the daughter of a prominent landowner from Caloocan, and after revealing his intentions to marry Orian, her father disapproved as Bonifacio was a Freemason. Prior to meeting Orian, Bonifacio was already part of a secret revolutionary society known as the Katipunan. Nevertheless, Bonifacio pursued Orian, and after six months of courtship, finally agreed to marry him. She too was persistent on marrying Bonifacio, and her father finally approved of the union. Shortly before marrying Bonifacio, Orian joined the Katipunan and adopted the name La Cambini. They got married in Benondo Church and later married again under Katipunan rites. The couple later had a son named Andres, but soon died of smallpox. As a member of the Katipunan, Orian served as the custodian of the society's documents. During the outbreak of the Philippine Revolution in 1896, Bonifacio led the Katipuneros in Manila, with Orian by his side. However, an internal conflict within the Katipunan between the Magdiwang faction and the Magdalo faction in Cavite had weakened the revolutionary movement. Bonifacio belonged to the Magdiwang faction. On the 28th of April, 1897, Bonifacio, his brother Procopio, and Oriang were captured by Emilio Aguinaldo's men in Cavite. It has been said that Oriang was raped by one of Aguinaldo's men during the capture. Andres Bonifacio was later tried and executed on the 10th of May, 1897, in Marugondon, Cavite. After Bonifacio's death, Julio Nagpil, a Katiponero commander from the northern Philippines loyal to Bonifacio, took care of the widowed Oriang. The two fell in love and later married in Quiapo, Manila on the 10th of December, 1898. Oriang later died in 1943 during the Second World War. Many have been familiar with India's iconic Taj Mahal and its backstory, a mausoleum built by an Indian ruler for his favorite wife, who died of childbirth. In the Philippines, there is a similar tale, but a mansion was built instead of a mausoleum. The love story of Mariano Lacson and Maria Braga is one of the most famous in Visayas. Don Mariano Lacson was a haciendero or plantation owner from Talisay City, Negros Occidental. When he traveled to Hong Kong, he met Maria Braga, a Portuguese lady who hailed from Macau. Don Mariano immediately fell in love with the beautiful Maria. So in love, in fact, that Don Mariano quickly proposed marriage not long after they met. The couple married and later settled down in Talisay. The marriage was a very happy one and resulted in a brood of children, ten to be exact. But tragedy struck while Maria was pregnant with her eleventh child. Maria accidentally slipped in their bathroom, which caused her to breathe profusely. Already in a fragile condition, she couldn't bear to travel to the nearest physician. Don Mariano quickly sent one of the horsemen to fetch the physician in the nearby town of Silay. It took days for the physician to be fetched and brought to Talisay, but it was too late. Both Maria and the child died before the physician could arrive. 
Don Mariano was engulfed with grief for the loss of his wife. He later built a mansion near the house where the couple lived with their children. It was said that he built the mansion in order to help him heal his broken heart and remind him of Maria for the rest of his life. The mansion was one of the most beautiful residences constructed in Negros. However, it was later burned down in 1942 by Filipino guerrilla fighters to prevent its use as a military office by the Japanese during the Second World War. It burned for three days until its cement frame was the only one left standing. Today, the mansion ruins remain as an iconic landmark in Negros Occidental, referred to as the Ruins and dubbed as the Taj Mahal of the Philippines. We all grew up with fairy tales like Sleeping Beauty and Rapunzel, but there is one love story that would capture one's imagination and show how far a person would go to for love. Flaviano Yenko was a student at the Universidad de Santo Tomas when the Philippine Revolution broke out in 1896. He later joined the Philippine Revolutionary Army under General Emilio Aguinaldo in Cavite. Yenko was described as a man who dressed neatly and elegantly. While in Cavite, Yenko courted a lady, but this did not sit well with the lady's father. The father insisted that Yenko didn't deserve his daughter's hand because the young man was incapable of fighting for a noble cause like a man. Yenko did everything he could to prove the lady's father wrong. Yenko joined Aguinaldo's army and went on to participate in missions crucial to the success of the revolution. He fought bravely in the Battle of Pinacayan in 1896 and in other battles against the Spanish forces. He later earned the rank of Brigadier General. But Yenko's luck ran out when he was fatally wounded during the Battle of Pasong Santol. He was brought to a hospital in Imos, Cavite, where he was nursed by the lady he was courting. Yenko finally earned the approval of the lady's father, who previously doubted his capabilities. Unfortunately, love was not able to save Yenko's life. General Flaviano Yenko died in 1897 at the age of 23. He became the youngest Filipino general to die in combat. Now this is a grisly one. For many Cebuanos, the Fuente Osmeña is an iconic landmark in Cebu City. Its circular park also serves as a lovely place for a romantic date. But little do many know that the park saw two infamous murders over a century ago. The year was 1915, and the dead bodies of Ramon Santiago and Natividad Garcia Reyes were found in the park. Ramon was a man who hailed from Negros, while Natividad was married to Carlos Reyes, a wealthy businessman. Reyes's family owned one of the biggest stores in Cebu at the time, called Bazar Rizal. Natividad was described as a tall, slim, Junoesque goddess, with a jet black hair falling down to her waist. It was reported that both Ramon and Natividad had an illicit love affair. Things went sour on Sunday, the 21st of March, 1915. While her husband was away on business, Natividad met Ramon at the Fuente Osmeña. The next day, their bodies were discovered at the park. Natividad had multiple stab wounds, while Santiago's face was said to have been crushed. It has been rumored that Carlos's brother, Elias, was incensed by this scandalous affair. And so Elias, along with a friend and three of his friends, were accused of the murders. The murder case went on for two years, with Cebu's constabulary even asking for Manila's help in the matter. Eventually, the judge ruled that the accused, except for one, were found guilty. The accused appealed to the Supreme Court, which acquitted them, saying that the constabulary had tampered with the testimonies of the witness. The accused were then set free. The Fuente Osmeña murders remain to be one of Cebu's most mysterious and celebrated murder cases to this day. So what do you think about these tragic tales of love? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the Kabilin Center channel 
for more interesting facts you would like to hear about. And we hope to see you in the next episode here in Historia Historia Lang.